My name is David Benny. I'm acting head teacher at Penrail Comprehensive School. Croiso, welcome to the virtual awards evening for 2021 for our outgoing ULM. I say evening, but of course you may be viewing this at a different time of day. So I'll say Borada, Prunhounda, and indeed Noswaitha. A warm welcome to pupils, parents, carers, and indeed the wider community that may be watching to celebrate the success of our year 11 pupils. Now in a normal year, the pupils receiving their awards would have been invited along with their families to an awards evening at the theatre. Of course, I'm sure nobody needs reminding that the last year has been anything but normal. And in reality, the last 21 months have been absolutely extraordinary because of the global pandemic, of course, COVID-19. This year group, our outgoing year 11, when they were in year 10, their year 10 experience suddenly came to a halt in March 2020 uh, with about three days uh, notice. Massive disruptions. And it was hoped that when this year group returned in September 2020 as year 11, that we'd have a fairly normal year, culminating in uh, your GCSE exams at the end of it. Now, if we think back with the vaccine programme not yet rolled out, then yes, that optimism was unfortunately misplaced. Your year 11 experience was punctuated with one or two group quarantines and then because of COVID-19 figures across Wales, schools reverted to virtual learning from mid-December to mid-March. This meant that again, your time at school had been significantly disrupted. When you returned in March 2021, earlier this year, the Welsh Government agreed that pupils would be given CDGs, Centre Determined Grades. Now these would be different to the grades given to the previous year 11. They would not be predictions, but would actually have to be based on a range of evidence, including lots of in-class assessments. And this meant for a seven week period from Easter early this year to just after Whitson, our year 11 pupils would have assessment after assessment as we, just as every other school across Wales was doing, were collecting evidence to give robust, accurate and fair CDGs. CDGs that you deserved. Now you really didn't have a great key stage four and perhaps your year, your year group had the worst deal of all year groups in terms of disruptions with the pandemic. However, that being said, I think as a group of students, there were some positives that have come from the experience, some genuine silver linings, if you will. Firstly, having gone through your time at school in such challenging, trying and testing circumstances, this can only have added to your resilience. The digital skills that you had to develop just to keep on top of your home learning, well, these will be useful for the rest of your work in life and accessing les lessons, both live and asynchronous, at home, often on your own, takes dedication, organisation and staying power. Your independent learning skills will have been greatly sharpened and these will serve you in good stead for the rest of your life. There's probably never been a year group that has left school that can boast the levels of autonomy and independence that you pupils can. Despite such a difficult experience, there are some genuine positives to take. Now, my biggest takeaway of you all as a year group prior to the pandemic was that you were a close-knit group and there was a real sense of team spirit with you all. But my abiding memory of you now you've left school was how you dealt with the pandemic. It was your no-nonsense, get on with it attitude. There was no feeling sorry for yourself. It was a case of, this is what we're faced with, so let's just get on with it. And this was particularly true during your seven weeks of assessments. In truth, school life at the time was a grind, but you'd come in every day, big smiles, just happy to be in school and getting on with your tasks with a minimum of fuss. I was genuine, in genuine awe of how you handled everything from March 2020 until you left school early this year. And you missed out on so much, including your prom, the year 11 school shown so much more, but no complaints, no feeling sorry for yourselves. And things will get back to normal one day, but what you've learned and how you develop will stay with you forever. You certainly won't be forgotten at Penrill Comprehensive School and it's been a privilege to have shared uh, your school with you. Now, if this was a normal awards evening, you would sit in the theatre and when it came to your award, Mrs. Goulden or Mr. Evans would read out a statement explaining why you've won your award. You'd come up on stage, you'd receive a trophy, a certificate and a cheque. The evening would then finish with a speech from our guest of honour and then some photographs. We're going to stay as close to that format as we possibly can. In a few moments, Mrs. Goulden and Mr. Evans are going to uh, go through the awards announcing the winners and reading a statement explaining why each pup uh, pupil has won the award. We then finish the virtual evening with a speech by ex-pupil Mark Sanger, MBE. Pupils are then invited to come into school in the next few days or weeks to pick up their checks and certificates. Now, unfortunately, the trophies won't be there. They go back into the display cabinets as they do every year, um, but you will have your names etched on them. 
Now I'm going to uh, finish by giving a special mention to the Year 11 pupils that have achieved, against all the odds, their DAV Bronze Award. And those pupils are Alice Austin, William Davis, um, Leith Hazel, Sam Howells, Holly Isaac, Jay Minglu, uh, Thomas Locke and Uthman Mohammed. The pupils who signed up to the DAV Bronze Award programme in 2019 had a really rough deal. When Covid hit in March 2020, it meant all activity stopped. No longer could pupils go to the gym or play for their team as part of their physical activity. No longer could they help out at local brownies for, uh, for their volunteering or attend piano lessons for the skills section. So pupils had to be imaginative when it came to completing activities that they could do during lockdown. Amazingly, but not surprisingly, our pupils showed resilience and creativity. They started baking at home, making jewellery at home, walking the dog for shielding neighbours, delivering food parcels, learning sign language to an online course. And of course, all expedition training had to stop and we had no idea when or if they would get to complete an expedition. So when restrictions lifted enough for us to do an expedition, it did have its limitations. The pupils had to carry all required equip uh, equipment for a two day expedition. They had to cook an evening meal and set up camp. Now, unfortunately, COVID restrictions meant they couldn't actually camp out. So they had to go home late Saturday evening and return early Sunday morning to complete their journey. It was difficult. Now, normally we teach navigational techniques over several training days and after school sessions. These pupils had little time to prepare and had to learn very quickly. There was no time for messing about and each pupil showed exceptional dedication. Staff are extremely proud of these eight pupils and the pupils should be extremely proud of their achievements. And for me, that really sums up the spirit uh, of the year group. Now, I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Uh, Goulden and Mr. Evans. And I'd also like to sincerely thank squadron leader Mark Sanger, MBE, past pupil for his virtual speech, which is so inspiring. I'm glad we have it saved for posterity. I'd like to add my personal congratulations to all the award winners. As a school, we are very, very proud of you. So enjoy the rest of the evening. Year 11, good luck with all you do in life. Remember, you will always be Penrail pupils. You just won't come here to school anymore. Hello there and welcome to Pupils, Parents and Carers and members of the Penrail Comprehensive School wider community. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to our awards evening presentation coming to you virtually this year with myself, Mrs Sharon Goulden and Mr Howard Evans here. We will be taking you through the awards and presenting these individually. As I said, thank you so much for taking time this evening to join us. Our first award, the Memorial Award for Outstanding Service to the School, as shown here. This goes to our previous head boy, Harry John. Now, Harry was very much an exemplary member of the year group. He represented his form as a form rep for many years in school. He had an active role on the school council. And then he became successful in being elected as head boy when he was in year 11. During year 11, he played a significant role in organising the school council. His calm and mature manner made him a consistently positive role model, especially for our younger boys within school. Harry was an ambassador for student voice and was keen to ensure that all pupils had their own say in the running of the school. Harry always acted in a friendly and mature, trustworthy manner around our school. He was an absolute delight to have within the year group and as a representative of the school. He would not only carry out the task which was requested to him, he would do so to his utmost best ability and in an exceptional manner. Having a friendly, calm and charismatic nature, Harry was a popular member of his year group. He mixed well with everybody. He was able to work with everyone and bring out the best within his peers. The Memorial Award for Outstanding Service to the School is presented to Harry John. The Penrail Award for Outstanding Service to the School is awarded to Charlotte Benny. Charlotte was an absolute delight to have in the year group. She represented her form class as a form rep on many occasions furthermore, represented the year group as year rep. As part of her duties, Charlotte attended student voice meetings, always with valid contributions on behalf of pupils. 
She also attended town council meetings, providing a valuable link with the local community. Achieving the position of head girl seemed a natural progression for Charlotte. Throughout her time in school, she was always available for her peers, always polite and always tried her best. Charlotte partook in every school production during her five years, giving her all to, to her role and obviously enjoying the whole process of theatre. Charlotte mixed well with her peers, was always willing to volunteer for any task and help out in any way she could. With Charlotte's dedicated outlook and hard-working ethics, the year group are sure she'll not only succeed in her chosen future career, but excel. The Penarell Award for Outstanding Service to the School, Charlotte Ben. This year, the English Excellence Award for the Best GCSE Performance in English goes to Caitlin Williams. Caitlin was an excellent student of English and English literature. During the lockdown period, she was always the first person to access the remote learning on the Google Classroom, and she was the first person to submit her work, which was of excellent standard. She demonstrated the stamina and commitment that it took to produce superb, detailed, and cogent writing, always willing to redraft her work and to make improvements so it was the very, very best that it could be. Caitlin was absolutely determined to reach the highest grades possible. She attended after school classes, asking for advice whenever it was needed and spending time crafting and refining all of her work. Caitlin achieved an A star in both English and English literature. Fantastic. These were really, really well deserved grades. The English department is delighted to present the English Award for Excellence to Caitlin Williams. The English Achievement Award for the most praiseworthy effort in English goes to Leith Hazel. From the start of the GCSE course, Leith was determined to achieve the top grades in language and literature and made every effort to do so. Not only did he show commitment to his studies, but his work was often very entertaining and sometimes unforgettable for the reader. Two such pieces of work for his formal letter of complaint to Trump about one of his hotels and his hilarious narrative about the personal challenge of cleaning his bedroom. Both pieces were thoroughly engaging and clearly demonstrated how much he enjoys experimenting with language. Likewise, his literature work was always of the highest quality, showing perception and maturity in his ideas. Lace work was always a pleasure to read. The English Achievement Award for the most praiseworthy effort in English, Lace Hazel. This year, the Mathematics Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in mathematics is awarded to Millie Everest. Millie always approached her mathematics with a very cool and calm attitude. She never panicked when faced with a difficult challenge and she always dealt with stress in an exceptionally relaxed manner. Throughout the lengthy assessment process in mathematics, Millie did not let anything face her. She completed everything which was asked of her with a smile on her face. Millie was also a great help to her friends within lessons and developed herself into being an excellent peer teacher. It is an absolute pleasure to have known and to have taught Millie. She should be very proud of her achievements and even more proud of the very fine person who she developed into during her time at Penarell Comprehensive School. This year, the Mathematics Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance is awarded to Millie Everest. The Mathematics Achievement Award for the most praiseworthy effort in mathematics goes to Joshua Griffiths. The maths department reports that Joshua always worked consistently well, both in class and with any work posted via Google Classroom. He always strived to improve on his results from one assessment to the next, which allowed him to secure excellent grades in both maths and numeracy. Always willing to participate in class, Joshua is a very conscientious young man who is a delight to teach, and any teacher would be pleased to have him in their class. The Mathematics Achievement Award, the most praiseworthy effort in mathematics, Joshua Griffiths. This year, 
the Marion Williams Science Award for the best GCSE performance in the sciences is awarded to Caitlin Williams. Caitlin was a triple science student who worked exceptionally hard throughout her scientific studies. She approached all scientific challenges with a mature and a calm attitude. Caitlin demonstrated maturity well beyond her years from a very young age. She was always seeking to learn from any mistakes and always aiming to further develop her scientific abilities. Caitlin was quiet yet confident in lessons. She was consistently supportive to her peers. She was able to take a lead role within group activities, but never dominated any of the pupils. She always empathised with the learning needs of her peers. Five pupils in the triple science class attained three A star grades in biology, chemistry and physics. Caitlin attained the highest assessment score in both biology and physics and the joint highest assessment score in chemistry. And this was in a highly competitive academic class. This year, the award for the best GCSE performance within the sciences goes to Caitlin Williams. The Science Achievement Award for the most praiseworthy effort in science goes to Jasmine McLean. The science department are proud to have taught someone that set themselves such high goals and then did everything in their power to achieve them. Whether in class or virtually during online lessons, Jasmine would give nothing less than her very best every single lesson. She was always willing to offer answers and explanations in class. Jasmine didn't care whether she was right or wrong, she simply relished the opportunity to develop her scientific knowledge and understanding. Jasmine was an excellent example to her peers and this helped contribute to a really strong classroom ethos. When a pupil worked with such dedication as Jasmine, lesson in and lesson out, week in and week out, the result will take care of itself. And it did. Jasmine achieved an A star and an A in applied science. This was richly deserved. A Science Achievement Award for the most praiseworthy effort in science, Jasmine McLean. This year, the Art Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in art goes to Louise Carruthers. Louise demonstrated exceptional artistic talent from her early school years here at Penarail. She developed her creative skills throughout her education and this culminated with outstanding coursework that Louise produced for her GCSE portfolio. Through her creativity, her dedication and hard work, Louise achieved 100% as a result in her coursework. This was an exceptional achievement. I am proud that Louise has chosen a career which is creative by studying art during her further education within college. I know how dedicated Louise is and how her efforts can only achieve success for her. Louise Carruthers is an exceptional artist and thoroughly deserves this award for excellence in art. The Business Studies Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in business studies goes to Jay Lou. Jay's teacher comments that from the beginning of the course, he demonstrated an abundance of qualities. He was fully committed to the subject and showed a keen interest in business, both inside and outside the classroom. It was clear that Jay has a natural flair for business. His attendance was excellent. When the lockdown struck, Jay remained fully committed to the course and he engaged fully with all home learning tasks as well as with the live lessons. He responded positively to constructive criticism given in homework and assignment feedback, and Jay always met deadlines. Jay passed with distinction at the highest level. Jay is very worthy of his award. The Business Studies Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in Business Studies, Jay Lee. This year, the Award for Excellence in GCSE Health and Social Care and Child Development goes to Neve Thomas. Throughout the two years, Neve worked consistently hard and she demonstrated both a commitment to tasks and a very keen interest within this subject. 
Neve worked effectively both within the classroom and at home during all of the remote learning tasks. Neve engaged in an excellent manner during this course to produce two superb NEA tasks based on service provision for adults and health promotion for adults, as well as excelling in the classroom assessments at the end of year 11. Neve achieved an A star in GCSE, health and social care and childcare. Neve Thomas is most worthy of this award and should be very proud of her achievement. The Award for Excellence in GCSE, Health and Social Care and Child Care goes to Neve Thomas. The Design Technology Award for the Best Performance in Design Technology goes to Jay Lou. The Design Technology Department comments that throughout the entire GCSE, Jay demonstrated an admirable commitment to his learning and a proactive and positive work ethic. He worked to an exceptional standard throughout the two years and was always eager to improve his work by taking on board feedback and critiques with maturity. Jay remained committed to his studies throughout several periods of remote learning and this commitment continued upon his return to school and is reflected in his final grade. Jay always displayed top class manners, worked incredibly well with others and on his own initiative and it was a pleasure to teach him. Jay will no doubt have a successful future ahead and the department wish him all the best. The Design Technology Award for the best performance in design technology, Jay Lee. This year, the Drama Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in drama is awarded to Charlotte Benny. It was clear to the drama department right from the start of year seven that Charlotte was a dedicated pupil who possessed a huge enthusiasm for performance. Charlotte is a talented and committed student and actor. Charlotte's success has not been realised by talent alone. Charlotte was a student who always worked with the maximum amount of dedication, enthusiasm and commitment. She was constantly aware of the perseverance needed to be successful within the arts. Charlotte would always do more than was required to ensure that each performance or written assessment was accomplished to an exceptional standard and a reflection of her full potential. Charlotte was also a valuable member of the cast in all school productions, beginning with a role in the chorus and then as a dancer and as a member of the vocal groups. We are delighted that Charlotte is continuing with her studies at A-level. She will be studying theatre arts within Gower College. No doubt she will excel in further education and beyond. Well done, Charlotte. This is a, an award that is thoroughly well deserved. The WBQ Award is presented to Alice Austin. The department is incredibly proud of the hard work and dedication shown by Alice over the two years of her Welsh Baccalaureate qualification. Alice consistently set herself high standards and strived in every lesson to achieve them. Her work was fantastic and very detailed as an individual, but she also worked well on team tasks and showed off her leadership skills. Alice worked diligently on her individual project in year 11, both online and in class. This dedication to her studies was re rewarded with an A star in the Welsh Baccalaureate. Well done, Alice, and we wish you the best of luck, of luck for the future. The WBQ Award, Alice Austin. This year, the Geography Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in geography is awarded to Lake Paisel. This was the strangest of academic years due to COVID and subsequent lockdowns. This resulted in a geography course without any field work, which is usually the most memorable part of the GCSE course. There was also no exam or NEA. This was a class of lockdown, remote learning and live lessons. Pupils were required to be more self-motivated while working at home and were uncertain of how their grades would be awarded. A few pupils emerged with credit and the front runner of these was Leith. Leith was always willing to ask and answer questions, contributing to the wider classroom experience within a truly eclectic class. It was clear that a growing maturity had emerged within Leith 
and the quality of his work improved significantly as he progressed throughout Year 11. At the end of the GCSE assessment process, Blake was clearly the highest achiever in GCSE geography. Blake consistently demonstrated an excellent understanding of both physical and human geography, alongside an appreciation of the subject within world and current affairs. Always humorous and always helpful, above all else, my abiding memory was Lake saying thank you at the end of every lesson. Lake was always a pleasure to teach. I am delighted to learn that Lake is pursuing geography and geology at Gower College. We wish him all the very best for the future. The Geography Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in geography is awarded to Lake Hazel. This year, the History Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in history goes to Joe Bates. Joe's teacher writes that it has been a real pleasure and privilege to have taught Joe for the duration of his school career. He consistently displayed a most conscientious, hard-working attitude and always produced work of the very highest standard. He goes on to say that Joe's name was on this award from his very first piece of extended writing in Year 7, which he clearly remembers being incredibly impressed by. The standard and sophistication of the writing was well beyond Joe's years and he knew from the outset that Joe would be a very talented historian. During the GCSE course, Joe not only produced some outstanding pieces of written work, but also displayed excellent historical knowledge and an understanding of often complex issues. He achieved a thoroughly deserved A-star grade, and indeed, in a year group that produced superb historians, for Joe to be ranked first is a fantastic achievement. He is therefore the worthy recipient of this year's History Award. The department wishes him every success in his future studies. This year, the ICT Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in ICT is awarded to Ethan Bowers. Ethan was a hard-working, intelligent and a well-spoken pupil. He made excellent contributions on a regular basis during class discussions and firmly deserves his A-star grade in GCSE ICT. Throughout his time studying the ICT course, Ethan showed attention to detail and great logical skills when developing his business spreadsheet. These logical skills were consistently evident when Ethan regularly arrived at ICT lessons with questions about programming. Within his own time, Ethan started to develop his own programming skills by studying the Python programming language that was used in the GCSE computer science course. Ethan's flair for programming was quickly evident. As part of the Unit 4 coursework, pupils were required to demonstrate their artistic and graphical design skills. It is important to stress at this point, the logical thinking programming skills and artistic capabilities, they do not usually accompany each other. However, Ethan showed great artistic talent in the development of his animated banner and his rotoscoped animation. Ethan's talents are unique as he can consider both logical thinking programming skills and artistic graphical design skills as his strengths. He is a talented computer scientist who will have a range of opportunities open to him within the future. We were very lucky to have taught ICT to a pupil as committed and as talented as Ethan Bowers. This year, the ICT Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in ICT is awarded to Ethan Bowers. Holly Isaac is the recipient of the Media Studies Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in Media Studies. From the very first lesson in Year 10, Holly showed her willingness to fully immerse herself into this new subject. She was not only a model pupil in every way, but also a modest, polite and caring person, contributing passionately to all class discussions, raising insightful and critical questions. Her understanding and knowledge of media language was outstanding, and she spent time at home crafting perfect essays. Her work during remote learning was exemplary, and her dedication was evident throughout a challenging time. Holly's production coursework 
showed a perceptive and mature grasp of the magazine industry, and the professional look of the magazine helped to secure her the top grades. Holly's media studies teacher writes that it was a pleasure and a privilege to teach someone who has such high standards for not only learning, but for the way in which she treats people, which is a magic combination. Holly truly deserves the award. The Media Studies Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in media studies, Holly Young. The Lloyds Bank Cup for the best GCSE performance in modern languages is awarded to Kira Newport. Even from year seven, the languages department could see that Kira was a born linguist. Kira has always been so modest about her talent, yet it should be shouted from the rooftop. Both her written and her spoken language was effortless and fluent. Kira's confidence in her Spanish oracy skills was key in supporting the language development of her peers. It is easy to see how dedicated and passionate Kira was about her Spanish, and we wish her every success for the future. We are proud to present Kira Newport with this Languages Award. Nuestra Estrella, our star. The Lloyds Bank Cup for the best GCSE performance in modern languages is awarded to Kira Newport. The Music Achievement Award for the best GCSE performance in music is presented to Beth and Thomas. It is very clear to the music department right from the start of year seven that Bethan was very passionate about her music making. She was an absolute pleasure to teach during her time at Penarail, always focused and conscientious in her work, giving 100% to every lesson, as well as being heavily involved in the extracurricular activities within the department. Bethan showed a real progress throughout her five years at Penarail, resulting in her final performance and composition work both gaining A stars. Her work was unique and her ideas were always musical, showing such passion and understanding of the subject area. Bethan worked incredibly hard during the lockdowns, where she fully engaged with all online learning. This really showed what a resilient, passionate and committed pupil Bethan was and how deserving she was of her final A star grade. The music department wished Bethan every success in the future and there are no doubt that she will go far. The Music Achievement Award the best GCSE performance in music, Beth and Thomas. This year, the Performing Arts Achievement Award for the best contribution to music and drama is awarded to Carrie James. The drama and music departments have had the pleasure of being involved in Carrie's journey as a performer. She is highly accomplished and highly talented. Carrie has fully embraced every opportunity that the school afforded her to develop and flourish as a performer. This not only includes the study of GCSE drama and GCSE music, but also her vital involvement in the school production each year. Carrie played roles that began in the chorus, linked to progress to being a dancer and then within the vocal group. She adopted each role with energy and enthusiasm, developing herself as a positive role model for the younger pupils at Penarail. Carrie was a committed and a dedicated student. She achieved A grades in drama and music at GCSE level. This success was the result of determination, diligence, and a desire to always achieve the full potential. Well done, Carrie. We wish you every success in the future. This year, the Performing Arts Achievement Award for the best contribution to music and drama is awarded to Carrie James. Millie Everest receives the Physical Education Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in physical education. Millie is an intelligent individual with a passion for sport and desire to obtain the highest possible standards. Throughout her GCSE PE studies, Millie's work ethic has been outstanding, being both diligent and perceptive in the classroom. She would always contribute fully to class activities, displaying both interest and enthusiasm in learning. Millie would continuously strive to enhance her knowledge of the subject matter, and this was reflected in her excellent GCSE result, where she attained an A-star grade. A 
talented footballer, Millie achieved full marks in her GCSE football practical assessment and throughout her five years at Penarale was a committed and valuable member of the school football team. Millie also played football outside of school, gaining selection for Swansea School girls football team. The PE department wishes Millie every success for the future. The physical education excellence award, the best GCSE performance in physical education, Millie Edwards. It is with great pleasure that the PE department presents Oscar Scott with the Sporting Achievement Award for commitment to extracurricular physical education. Throughout his years at Penarale, Oscar has been a committed, enthusiastic and ever-present member of all sports teams. His commitment to the team has proved exceptional throughout his schooling. Oscar has been a fundamental part of the school's rugby, football and athletics teams, progressing to represent Swansea schoolboys with rugby. Oscar always put superb effort into all of his performances and developed into a brilliant role model for our younger pupils. He never let any team down and has often stepped up to support older age groups out with their fixtures. Oscar is a worthy recipient of this award, an excellent sports person and a superb sporting role model. It is with great pleasure that we present Oscar Scott with the Sporting Achievement Award for commitment to extracurricular physical education. This year, the Religious Studies Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in religious studies goes to Jasmine Lee Llewellyn. Jasmine worked consistently well over the two years she was studying GCSE Religious Studies with excellent written assignments produced by this pleasant, polite and hardworking pupil. She achieved the highest marks for her A-star grade. Jasmine's teacher wishes her every success and happiness for the future in her chosen career. Jasmine is a very conscientious individual who deserves to do well. The Religious Studies Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in Religious Studies, Jasmine Lee Flewell. This year, the Vocational Education Award for the best performance in Vocational Studies goes to Ellie Mae West. This is awarded for her achievement in public services. Right from the outset of the course, Ellie demonstrated a positive and a committed attitude towards public services. She contributed fully in all class discussions and made excellent effort in all class tasks. Ellie produced three very detailed portfolios of work which demonstrated her detailed knowledge, understanding and application of the subject matter. Her independent research skills were also exceptional and she was consistently well motivated. Ali was very conscientious during her time in school and also during the lockdown learning period, which resulted in all pieces of work being completed to a very high standard. She is most worthy of this Vocational Studies Award and should be very proud of her achievement. This year, the Vocational Education Award for the best performance in Vocational Studies goes to Ellie Mae West. The Welsh Excellence Award for the best GCSE performance in Welsh is presented to Joe Bates. This year's recipient of the Welsh Award goes to a student who spent much of year 11 in self-isolation. Nevertheless, he attended lessons via a team's meeting and was never out of class or out of touch with his peers. Taught by his form teacher, Joe Bates was simply the best and was successful in gaining an A-star grade for his GCSE Welsh course. His work was always emailed on time and was an utter pleasure to mark. Joe's overall understanding of the Welsh language is Ben de Gered. When writing, his sentence patterns are varied, including sufficient detail to warrant consistently high marks or grades. Reading skills are mature, as Joe is able to glean relevant points from different texts for inclusion in any answer required. The class of 2021 will be remembered for the COVID-19 disruption, but Joe's indomitable spirit and his wanting to achieve allowed him to produce work of a consistently high standard. His oracy group assessment was done over a Teams meeting with his class teacher. The recording was then used as part of a department's moderation session, and their decision was unanimous in awarding Joe four marks. 
the quality of his spoken Welsh and answering the task set was simply second to none. Students like Joe Bates are few and far between and always a pleasure to teach. The Welsh Award for 2021 goes to a thoroughly worthy candidate to whom the department say a huge day out. The Thomas Award for Special Effort is awarded to Kanye Woods. Kanye is a pupil who came to Peniril with a lack of confidence in his own abilities and talents. He struggled to believe how amazing he truly was. Kanye, through hard work, dedication and a lot of laughter, left Peniril with a host of qualifications and self-awareness that is highly commendable. With support from both the STF and mainstream teachers, Kanye became a prefect and a representative on the Student Voice Council, supporting his peers and staff around him. He was the sunshine in every situation and was extremely kind, caring and funny. Kanye is a lovely, funny, kind person who always tried his very best in English. His individual presentation was highly unique, not just for discussing the topic chosen, but also as a masterclass in advertising his parents' local business. We would like to say congratulations and good luck to Kanye. We are sure that he has an amazing future in whichever path he chooses to take. We will miss him very much. Kanye is one in a million and richly deserves this award. This year, the Thomas Award for Special Effort is awarded to Kanye Woods. This year, the Head Teachers Award is given to James Calder. James was an integral part of year group, maintaining many long-standing friendships. James has a strong character and always maintained a courteous attitude to staff. It was this strength of character that has helped him overcome a number of challenges that he has faced during his time at Panarail, while excelling at his academic studies. James's mature and motivated nature ensured he could accomplish or overcome anything, even when the outcome was not what he desired. On the basis of staff and pupil recommendation, he was given the role of senior prefect. He undertook his duties very seriously and proved to be a dependable and fantastic role model. James is a love of sports and is a prodigious team player. He was committed to the local rugby team, as well as school teams here at Penarail. James has a clear idea of his future career path. He is motivated and focused on succeeding. We have every confidence that he will. Well done, James. You thoroughly deserve this Head Teacher's Award for all that you have overcome and have become. Last but not least, the final presentation is the Catherine Williams Award for the best and outstanding GCSE performance. This year, there are two worthy recipients of this award, Joe Bates and Ethan Bowers. Because of the constraints imposed by the pandemic, Joe and Ethan's academic achievements in years 10 and 11 are much more incredible than in previous years. Joe achieving a clean sweep across the board of 11 A-star grades and Ethan achieving 10 A-star grades and one A grade. Fantastic results for both. Joe and Ethan clearly demonstrate that when pupils fully embrace the opportunities offered during their time at Penarail, and pupils combine these with hard work and dedication, the result of this is significant success. As a school, we wish both pupils all the very best in their chosen academic and career pathways for which they have laid very secure foundations with these excellent performances at GCSE level. The final presentation is the Catherine Williams Award for the outstanding GCSE performance and this is awarded to Joe Bates and Ethan Bowers. Mrs Golden and I would like to thank everyone involved with this evening's award ceremony. We'd also like to thank you for watching what is one of our most favourite evenings of the year, where we celebrate success across the school. And finally, many congratulations once again to all the worthy recipients of their awards. Goodbye now.
Hello and congratulations Penrill class of 2021. It is an honour and a privilege to be invited to speak at your award ceremony this evening. I was in your position uh, 25 years ago uh, at the same award ceremony, albeit uh, not via Zoom. Uh, since then I went on to do uh, A-levels at Cosine College, uh, followed by a degree in Geology at Cardiff University, uh, before I moved out to South Africa and uh, worked for two years uh, effectively as a diamond hunter. Uh, then I moved back to the UK uh, and joined the RAF, uh, where I, I became a pilot, uh, flew missions all over the world, and uh, was recently awarded an MBE uh, by the Queen. What I didn't experience uh, at the end of my GCSEs um, was the tremendous upset to education and life that you have just uh, battled through uh, and overcome. And that would lead like, leads me on neatly to uh, sort of two things or themes that I'd like to talk about this evening, uh, which I hope will help you uh, con uh, continue with continued success uh, through whatever your endeavours are. First one will be self-belief, which I hope uh, your recent success has given you plenty of. Uh, but self-belief is extremely important uh, to open up your horizons and believe that you can go out and achieve whatever you want to, as long as you are determined enough and, and really back yourself to do that. And secondly would be uh, self-awareness as a nice counterbalance to self-belief. Uh, overconfidence is never a, a great trait. Uh, so having that self-awareness to uh, admit one's mistakes, uh, learn and develop it from them um, is another uh, massive boon uh, that will work together nicely uh, to help you succeed in the future. Um, some examples from, from, from my own um, career, etc. cetera. Um, firstly, when I went out to or towards the end of my uh, degree um, in Cardiff University, we had to undertake a field research project, which was due to take place uh, somewhere in the UK. Uh, I believe I was due to go up to the um, Yorkshire Moors. Well, unfortunately, the foot mouth crisis took hold and the entire UK countryside went into lockdown. Uh, the university didn't know what to do, uh, what we should do. Uh, they called us all into a meeting and said, if any of you got any other ideas, please um, fill your boots. Uh, to which a friend and I did. Uh, we took the um, adverse situation as an opportunity uh, and organised for ourselves to go out to Cape Town uh, in conjunction with the University of Cape Town. And uh, we completed a, a research project there, lived out there for over a month uh, and had a fantastic time. Uh, it took quite a bit of initiative and hard work, uh, but um, it worked out for us. Uh, and we impressed the university so much that even before I finished my degree at Cardiff, I was offered uh, a position to do uh, field research with a diamond mining company in Namibia. So um, I moved out there. Uh, I was only something like 21, uh, all alone out to South Africa, uh, which I'm sure gave my parents uh, some nightmares. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, perhaps apart from, from one occasion where I certainly did have to overcome significant adversity um, with a good amount of self-belief. Um, that was, I was out in the, in the Kalahari, uh, in my Land Rover uh, in the afternoon and it broke down and I could not get it going again and I was stuck. I only had enough water, probably a day's worth of water, and I had eaten all my food that I'd taken out with me. Um, I had three choices in front of me. I could either stay in the vehicle and hope someone would come and uh, find me within the next day or so, uh, which was probably unlikely, it being in the middle of nowhere. Uh, or I could just set off on foot and try and make it to my campsite, which was about 10 kilometers or so away. At least then I could get food and water, but then again, I would be stuck because I wouldn't have a vehicle. Um, or I could um, head off in the other direction, 15 to 20 kilometres away uh, was the village where I could get everything I needed. Um, so that's what I plumped for. Um, and it took, I was quite nervous, I will admit. Uh, I knew that if I uh, didn't make it before uh, to the village before sundown, I would probably, I would get lost and I'd be picked off by... Uh, leopards or um, hyenas which were in the area. Um, fortunately I did make it um, uh, and I lived to tell the tale but it took a, a lot of self-belief um, uh, to, to overcome that that uh, piece of adversity. Uh, life changed for me after that I moved back to the UK so I moved back down to Cape Town uh, and then unfortunately due to family circumstances uh, of ill health I needed to move back to the UK. Uh, not many diamond mines in the UK, so I then decided to join the RAF. Um, and it's been a fantastic career, but perhaps 
one of the most important skills I've, I've learned from my time in the RAF uh, is that is one of self-awareness. Uh, being open and honest to criticism uh, from others and also from within. Uh, we learn more from what goes wrong than we learn from what goes right. Uh, and it's our ability to quickly analyse that, uh, take on board all the information and then turn things around to be much better the next time, which allows us to progress. And not just ourselves, once you get used to that, you can also use that to bring everybody else along with you and improve the whole uh, organisation, company or whatever unit you are in and you can take them with you. Um, and the two skills, self-belief and, and self-awareness, I believe work very well in tandem. One stops you from becoming too overconfident and the other one stops you uh, from becoming too uh, obsessed with, with, with failure or, or getting things wrong. Put them together and hopefully uh, it'll allow you to reach new heights uh, and achieve everything that you want to. What you have achieved in the last two years for your GCSEs uh, has been to overcome significant adversity, something that your predecessors had not. You know, you've had both years your GCSEs affected uh, and to be able to not only get through that, but to succeed in the way you have, I, something, I think is something to be extremely proud of. Uh, and hopefully you take a tremendous amount of self-belief forward with you from that. Um, I'm sure if you continue in the same vein, um, with self-belief and awareness and hard work, you can succeed at whatever you set your sights on. So I just finally like to congratulate you again and wish you all the best uh, for your future.